So when you first signed up on the Laguna Beach five years ago, yes, yes, um, did you ever think that the show and the spinoff would be such a big phenomenon? It's funny. I was talking to the hairdresser downstairs about this just a few minutes ago, and I was telling him they came to my high school and they were like, "Do you want to be on MTV?" And I mean, of course you're going to say yes. Who would say no to that? You're 17. Um, we had no idea. We thought it was going to be like an episode of True Life, like I live in Orange County, because the OC was so popular then when when our show came on. Um, and, you know, it went from being something that was new to us and new to the network, too, and it's turned into careers for all of us. It's um, it's really amazing. I mean, I'm in Toronto, you know, working from TV right now, so I think it's really cool, and I think it's shown a lot of us that, you know, the entertainment industry is a really cool place to be, and um, I think I've definitely found my home, so it's cool. So uh, you had your first concert on Laguna Beach. You yeah. You to see, oh, like, 182 and... Uh, no doubt. And Bling... Oh, both. Both. Oh, awesome. So um, there's an altercation with a little person. Oh, yeah. Oh. So how scary was that? That was um, that was our first few months of filming ever. I mean, we had no idea what we were doing. Um, and people at the concert, I remember... You know, our show had never aired, nobody knew who we were, and people were kind of, you know, weirded out by the cameras and all of a sudden angry. And so when we were leaving, people like followed us out to the parking lot. And I remember being terrified, and the camera crew and the producers just stood there and just let it happen. I was like, welcome to reality TV. Like, I guess, <laughs> you know, people are running after us. I was afraid. And I remember the guys in our group, you know, stood up and got into people's faces and stuff. And it was like we were really fending for ourselves, and I don't know if anything had happened if, you know, somebody from the show had done something, but we really were totally awestruck by it. Just like, what's going on? I don't know. So no Doubt's coming back this summer. Are you, any plans to check them out? I would love to. I grew up on No Doubt, and they're from Orange County. I'm from Orange right. County. I remember my babysitter um, used to listen to them play music in one of their garages, like, before awesome. they even got famous. And so I love No Doubt. It's one of my favorite bands of all time, so I definitely want to see the show. So uh, you missed the first season of The Hills. Yes. Yes. So all your fans, we missed the commentary. Uh-huh. So what, what did you think about Jason and Lauren, um, Brian, Jordan, all that? It was funny. I was um, away at school that year, and I watched the show a little bit, but not all the time. For me, it's always been like I know these people in real life, so I don't have to watch episodes. <laughs> But um, I do watch them now, and I remember watching it, and it was a very interesting look at my friends' relationships that, um, you know, I had never seen before. And even on Laguna Beach, too, I would watch the episodes and be like, oh, wow, like, I didn't really even know, you know, they had that kind of relationship or what's going on. So it was an interesting experience to see it from a different point of view. So you uh, coined the nickname Justin Bobby. (sighs) Everyone loves that. Um, did Justin ever confront you about that? <laughs> I mean, no, but <laughs> he was uh, not very happy with me for quite some time as a result of that. <laughs> okay, well... He's into it now, though, yeah. I think. He, like, goes by it. It's awesome. So, um, so, you know, some stars like Spencer and Heidi are using the show to promote themselves and their projects. Yeah. However, you've decided to become a spokesperson for Yaz, mm-hmm. and you've uh, done some charity work with uh, children and promoting education yeah. and books. Um, can you talk about that a bit? Definitely. Um, I'm an ambassador for Jumpstart, which um, I know, at least in the United States, is a literacy organization for young children, and um, I'm actually doing a big campaign with them right now that um, is promoting their Read for the Record Day, which is in October in the United States, and they're trying to get as many people reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar on one day as possible. So, you know, for me, you, you know, I have an education all through college. I loved going to school and reading was so important to me. And so, you know, that's something that I want to take back to my community to help young people with, to get them just as inspired about learning because it has um, done really amazing things for me. So, excited. So, now you were reading to Mm four-year-olds. So (laughs) Preschoolers. Preschoolers. So was that, uh, you know, were you less stressed out than dealing with, you know, typical Hills fans? Yeah, because they have no idea who you are, what you're doing. They're just like, oh, yeah, I want to read. But it was funny, reading to such young children, they space out really easily, and they, like, want to hold the book and, like, do all these things. So reading to a group of young children is a lot tougher than I originally anticipated. But it's turned out to be pretty fun. 